Hey, today we get to play some math games before math. I mean, I get to play math games before math because I'm the only one here. Well, and Carl. Carl's playing too. All right, Carl, so we're gonna play horse in the barn. Who do you think should go first? I think I should go first. You think you should go first? Well, why don't we Rochambeau it? Ready? One, two, three. Oh, Carl, you got paper. Paper covers rock. You win. Ooh, what'd you get, Carl? Look closely. You have five times three. What is it, Carl? Uh, right, Carl, it's 15. Good job. Let's see what I get. Ooh, Carl, I got six times three. That's 18. Read them and weep, Carl. <laughs> I get to put my horses in the barn. Okay, let's do it again. Yep. Throw them, Carl. Throw them. Ooh. Oh. Carl, you got six times one. That's not looking good, Carl. All right, let's see if I can beat your six times one. Oh, check it. I got six times two, Carl. Six times two is 12. You've got six times one, which is only six. I get to put my horses in the barn again. Oh, this is great. Okay, this is gonna be your, this is gonna be your lucky, your lucky throw. Ready? Ready, shake it up. Ooh. Oh, Carl. Carl got six times two. Do you know what that is, Carl? You're right, it's 12. Okay, let me try mine. It's my turn. Oh! Read them and weep, Carl. Five times four, that's 20. That beats your six times two, which is 12. I'm gonna put them in again. Sorry, Carl. What's that? You wanna stop? Oh, because it's time for math? Oh, okay, yeah, we'll stop. Let's put this all away. That game was so much fun, but we do have to start math, so time to put it away. Oh, oh, oh no, I can't do it. Oh, I gotta do it fast, because it's time for math. Oh, we'll get this later, okay. Hey everyone, it's time for math. Today's lesson is on word problems, and guess what? We're gonna be using grams and kilograms, adding or subtracting them. Hmm, what else could we do with those things? Well, uh, there it is, I wrote it on the board. So we're going to get started with a word problem. I'm gonna write it on the board and we'll go through how to solve it and then we'll look at our math workbook. This is the first problem. It reads, a box of canned soup has a mass of one kilogram, 560 grams. The empty box has a mass of 305 grams. What is the mass of the cans of soup in the box? Well, we're gonna to have to go through this and look for the clues that will help us answer the problem. So let's do that. Looking at the problem again, there are some, there is some information in here that will definitely help us solve it. There are clues and we are mathematician detectives right now. We're gonna find those clues. One of the clues is that the box with the soup in it, right here, the box with soup in it has this mass. Clue number one. There's another clue. It says once uh, the box is empty, it has a different mass. So someone went in and took all the soup cans out. The mass of that box is right here. 305 grams for an empty box. Clue number two. What is the mass of the cans? Oh, okay. So the question is asking us, how much mass do the cans of the soup have? Not the soup and the box, but just the soup. It doesn't tell us directly in the problem, but we can find the answer. Watch. We are going to draw a bar model to show what's happening. So we have two things to compare. The box of, with soup in it and the box without any soup in it. The box with soup in it has a bigger mass. So that bar model is going to be bigger. 
All right, here we go. This is going to represent um, the box. It'll say with soup and clue. That's its mass, one kilogram, 560 grams. So let's label it one kilogram, 560 grams. And let's get rid of that so it's not confusing. Okay, and then <clears throat> our next clue is that if the box is empty, it has that mass. So let's show the empty box. So it's going to be a smaller box because it's less mass. And we'll label it empty box and told us it's 305 grams. So let's mark it. Mark, label it, I should say. All right. Um, <clears throat> the cans of soup went somewhere. They went out. That's going to be this area right here. This is going to be cans of soup. It's going to be their mass right there. And that is what we're trying to find. Now that we have set up our bar model, we can figure out what to do to find how much those cans of soup weigh or what their mass is. So <clears throat> if we were to put, we want to find this. If we were to put this box right up here and take it away, we'd be left with a box this long which happens to be the same length as that one. So we're gonna take away, we're going to subtract. Let's write it. One kilogram, 560 grams, subtract 305 grams. Hmm. Well, there's no kilograms on this side to subtract from there, so we're gonna leave that for a second. Um, then we ask, can 560 subtract 305? Yes, it can. So I know over here in my answer, I'm going to have at least one kilogram because one kilogram minus zero kilograms is one kilogram. And now we need to do this math. Can we subtract straight across? Can zero take away five? No. All right, so let's set up the algorithm. Oh, let's show it. 560 subtract. 305. Okay, zero cannot take away five, so yep, you have to rename. Take one away from six, you're left with five. We stash a set of 10 in there next to that zero, which makes it 10. 10 minus five is five. Five minus zero is five. And five minus three is two. These are our grams, which we can put now in our answer. The answer is one kilogram, 255 grams. And because this is a word problem, guess what you have to do? Write a sentence. Um, the mass of soup cans is one kilogram, 255 grams, period, circle. <clears throat> there we go. And that's how to solve that word problem. All right, mathematicians, let's get right into our workbook. If you don't have your workbook out yet, please get it out and look at page 24. Exercise seven. Looks like we're gonna be reading some scales on here, and these are word problems, even though they might not look like it at first. So today we're going to do number one. You don't have to do number two. Skip it. On the next page, we're going to do number four. You don't have to do number three. Unless you want to, then you can. When you turn the page over, these look like um, more uh, word problems that you're used to seeing in the book and uh, they drew bar models for you. So we will do five and six on this page. So you have one, two, four problems to do total. Let's start with this one. Uh, when you're reading these scales, just be careful that you read them correctly. This says, find the mass of the following. First, 
you have to find the total mass of the toothpaste and the book. Hmm, there's your book, there's your toothpaste. Here's the scale that tells you how much, how much mass those two have together. So remember when you're reading a scale, you start at the zero and you go around this way. This is called clockwise. So the arm is pointing right here. So you don't have to count all the way. We can start right here. Um, we do have to know how many each of those tick marks stands for. So you might want to go up there and count that out. If we count it by ones, one, two, three, four, five, we're not counting by ones. If we're counting by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, aha, we're counting by tens. Figured it out. So now we come over here, we're at 250. We're going to count up by tens. So we're at 250, 260, 270, 280. These two together weigh 280 grams. Then it goes on to ask you this. The mass of the toothpaste is 100 grams. Huh, good to know. So what is the mass of the book? Hmm. If they weigh this together and they tell you how much the toothpaste weighs, how do you find the mass of the book? <gasps> Bar models. Let's do it. So we're going to show a bigger bar model for their weight together. I'm just going to label it together. You could label it book and toothpaste. And we found that to be 280 grams. And then it tells us, okay, we're going to show down here toothpaste and we need another box for book. Well, now we have to write really Toothpaste. Can you see that? And this is book. All right, tells us the toothpaste is 100 grams. Oh, nice. Let's label our bar model. And it doesn't tell us how much the book is, so we're going to label that with a big question mark. Hmm, we just saw a bar model like this on the board. We know this mass, we know that mass, but we don't know that. If we want to find this, we want this area here to be the same length as that. So if we put this on top of that and take it away, we'll have it. So this bar model shows us to subtract. So you're going to take 280 grams and subtract from it 100 grams. And you should be able to do this in your head. 280, subtract 100, right, it's 180. The answer is 180 grams. <clears throat> okay, um, that's how to do that one. Moving on to the next page, number four. I want to see if you can do this, um, most of this on your own. I'll get it set up for you, and then you can do the, the actual addition or subtraction. Let's find out what we're supposed to do. Here's our little scale. We have two tennis balls, and we have five marbles sitting on it. And it's asking you to tell what that mass is, so we, you need to read your scale. Uh, are we counting by tens again? Let's see. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? Yes, we are. So we're going to go all the way here to 300 and then start counting by tens. 310, 320, 330. So the mass of uh, all of those is 330 grams. Then it tells you that each tennis ball has a mass of 60 grams. So this one here is 60 and that one there is 60. And it wants you to figure out the mass of them together. So you need to figure that out right here, right to answer. And then it needs to know the mass of the five marbles. So once you find out how much that is and you know what they are together, that problem's going to be almost exactly like this one, set up exactly this way. To see what you get. Then it goes on to say the marbles have the same mass 
find the mass of each marble. Oh, so once you find out the mass of all the marbles, one, two, three, four, five, you can find out how much just one weighs. I'll draw a little bar model to show that. I'm gonna do um, one, two, three, four. So we have five spots that represent those five marbles. And once you find out the total, then you can find out one. That's gonna look like this. Five units equals, and whatever you found up here. So one unit equals whatever this is divided by five. See if you can do it. If you have questions, just ask me. You can find me in the chat room. Okay, moving on to the next word problem. It says a pineapple has a mass of two gram, oh sorry, two kilograms, 50 grams. A watermelon is 600 grams heavier than the pineapple. Okay, what is the mass of the watermelon? What is the total mass of the two fruits? Let's see what they drew. They have a bar for the pineapple. They're comparing it to the watermelon. Oh, they made them different colors. Nice. Uh, they labeled the mass of the pineapple right here. Two kilograms, 50 grams. Um, they did not label the mass of the watermelon because it doesn't tell you directly. It just says that it's that much heavier than the pineapple. So this area here is how much heavier it is. And they labeled that 600 grams in this area. How do you find the mass of the watermelon? You want that bar and that bar to be the same length as this bar. So you will be, if you're thinking add, you are correct. You wanna add those two. That is, when you add your grams, I can already tell it's not going to go over a thousand. So you don't have to do any renaming. What is the mass of the watermelon? I'm going to show that's two kilograms, 50 grams, plus 600 grams. And your answer will be in kilograms and grams. Um, there is nothing over, over here to add to those kilograms, so it's just gonna be two kilograms in your answer, and then 600 plus 50. <gasps> Thank you, math gods. That's an easy problem, 650. So the mass of the watermelon is this. Now it goes on to ask you, what is the total mass of the two fruits together? That's what this means. If you put this pineapple together with that watermelon, what do you get? If you're thinking you need to add them, you're correct. So now we're going to add <clears throat> the mass of the pineapple, which is two kilograms and 50 grams to the mass of the watermelon that you just found, which was two kilograms, 650 grams. So, this is pretty easy math too. Gosh, thank you math gods. Okay, you can add like units. So we've got kilograms plus kilograms and we've got grams plus grams. So two plus two is four and 50 plus 650 is mental math easy yes it's 700 grams so our answer is right here oh I should probably write a sentence what is the total mass of the two fruits okay mass of the two roots is this. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. The total mass of a bag of flour and a bag of salt is two kilograms, 400 grams. Okay. If the bag of flour has a mass of one kilogram, 950 grams, find the mass of the bag of salt. Oh, all right. Well, let's look at their bar model. The total mass of all is two kilograms, 400 grams. So this is everything. That is the flour and the salt. 
So that's what they labeled here, everything. Now, if the bag of flour has a mass of one gram, okay, so this is the mass of the flour, which looks like they labeled here, which means this bar is representing flour, so this bar is representing salt. Find the mass of the bag of salt. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna draw that a little differently so that hopefully it makes, oops, a little more sense to you. This is both, and they have this mass two kilograms, 400 grams. And then we're going to have flour by itself, which is one kilogram, 950 grams. And then we're going to have salt, which is, we don't know. So if we know this, then we know that, but we don't know that, how do we find it? Remember, we're gonna put this bar right on top of this one and take it away, we'll be left. So now I just told you how to find that answer. Let's go ahead and do it. When you're all finished, please take pictures of these pages so I can see how you did. That's it, that's Math for Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, bye.